Let me ask you a question. What do you think people would say you are known for? What's the one thing that everyone knows? The thing that you love? The thing you talk about all the time? Your passion for a certain sports team? An obsession with a specific Frappuccino? A crush on your favorite celebrity? The YouTube channel you can't get enough of? No matter what it is, we all have that thing we're known for being really into. We all have certain things that everybody knows we love, things that we're for. But when you're for something, it usually means you're against something else. You might be for a certain sports team, which also means you're completely against their rival. You might be for a good grilled hot dog, but completely against using ketchup to make it better. You might be for a certain pop star, but completely against the artist she has beef with right now. Do you see our point? All of us are for or against all sorts of different things. You probably know exactly what your friends are for or against, right? Why? Because you know your friends really well. You see the way they live their lives, you hear the things they talk about, and you know the places they go to all the time. And all of those things help you define what you're for and what you're against. And what we're for and what we're against are vital parts of who we are. Do you know what I mean by the word vital? It means something that's necessary, required, or really important. When you go to the doctors, they check things like your heartbeat, breathing, and blood pressure, and they call them your vitals because each one is super important. It's vital that they are healthy so that you can stay alive. Now, while being for or against something isn't as vital as keeping our heart beating, it's a pretty important part of who we are, especially when it comes to our faith. Whether you believe anything you've heard about Jesus or not, you probably know that his group of followers are called Christians. And whether you're a Christian or not, you probably know that there are a lot of things that Christians seem to be either for or against. What Christians are for and against has become a vital part of what people think it means to be a Jesus follower. In fact, I bet all of us could come up with a list right now of the things we think Christians are supposed to be for or against. Maybe you'd say Christians are for going to church every Sunday, or for celebrating Christmas and Easter, or for helping people who are hungry or suffering. And on the other side of things, maybe you'd also say Christians are supposedly against things like people who don't believe what Christians believe, or certain ways people choose to live their lives, or specific types of music or movies. My point is that there are a lot of different ideas about what Christians are supposed to be for or against. Those things seem to be vital parts of what it means to be a Christian. But how do we know if we are getting this right? If we believe in Jesus, how do we know what we are truly supposed to be for or against? The easiest way to discover what Jesus followers are supposed to be about is to look at what Jesus himself was all about. If we can figure out what he was for and what he was against, then we can follow his lead. About 2,000 years ago, one of Jesus' closest friends, a guy named Matthew, wrote down the things he saw Jesus do and the things he heard Jesus say while he was here on earth. All of those stories are now found in the Bible, in the book of Matthew. Clever name, right? One of the stories Matthew wrote down from Jesus' life tells us about a conversation that Jesus had with a group of some of the most important people of his day. These guys were the religious leaders in Jesus' home country of Israel. They were experts in God's law, which meant basically they knew everything on the list of what they thought God was for and against. In fact, these guys had become known for being against a lot of things. One day, one of these religious leaders asked Jesus an important question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So basically, this guy was asking, hey Jesus, what's most important to God? What do you think he'd say is vital for us to be for or against? What's funny is that because this guy was such an expert in the law of that time, he probably thought he knew exactly what Jesus was going to say. But what Jesus actually said totally surprised this guy. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This may not sound all that crazy to us, but at that time it really was. You see, before Jesus, all these guys, like the religious leader who asked the question, were living for the law. They were living according to the list of rules and commandments they were supposed to follow to live a holy life. But Jesus came to change all of that. 
He came to set us free from a life defined by a bunch of do's and don'ts. He changed the game. So instead of life being all about rules and regulations, Jesus said that life was about loving God and loving others. In other words, Jesus said that what we're for is more important than what we're against. According to Jesus, what's vital is that we're known for having love for God and for others. That's it. In fact, Jesus didn't even mention here that God wants his people to be known for being against anything. When Jesus was asked what mattered most to God, he responded with just two things his followers are supposed to be for. Because what we're for is much more important than what we're against. Jesus said that the most important thing for us to be known for is being for God and for others. And knowing this has inspired Christians to care for people who most of the society ignores, to reach into the dark places and broken places to help others, and to show love to all people, no matter who they are, where they come from, or how they treat us in return. Living for what we are for has become a vital part of our Christian faith. If you consider yourself to be a follower of Jesus, then what you're known for says something to the world about who Jesus is. And when you're known for loving God and loving others, then you're a part of sharing a vital message to the world around you. So where do we start? Well, I think there are two simple things we can do this week to start being known for the right things. One, memorize it. The easiest way to start is by remembering what God says to be for. This week, try to memorize the verses we read from Matthew. Let them remind you of what God wants you to be for, loving Him and loving others. And two, notice it. Pay attention this week to the things you're for or against. Be aware of the jokes you make, the comments you put on social media, and the feelings you have towards other people. At the end of the week, take a few minutes to think about what stood out most, the things you're for or the things you're against. If you wind up noticing that you spend a lot of your time and energy being against things, don't feel guilty. We all do it. Look for ways you can change that by asking God to help you pay more attention to what he says is vital. You can even talk to your small group leader about ideas for how to talk, think, and act in ways that show love for God and for other people. If you're new to church or not sure about what you believe about Jesus, just know that no matter what you've heard about Christians, they are supposed to be for you. In fact, Jesus is for you no matter how you feel about him. Jesus had so many opportunities to make it clear to everyone what he was against, but he chose to live his life in a way that let everyone know who and what he was for. And we can do the same, because what we're for is more important than what we're against. As you head out today, I want you to think about this question. What is one thing people know I am for?